August 2021, Corsair announced that they were releasing a 500mm PC case fan. And well, I just had to have one. It's huge and RGB and just awesome. I posted on Twitter that if they don't make this for sale, I'll make one myself. Mark my words. Well, it turned out that Corsair's gigantic fan was indeed just a gigantic joke. But I am true to my word, so I made my own. No, no, it's over here. This is the world's most powerful PC case fan, powered by a 1500 watt brushless motor and a six cell LiPo, and it even has RGB. Let's just say it'll blow away the competition. We'll begin with the why. Well, I wanted one, okay? Don't at me. It all begins here in magical CAD space. I began by taking measurements from a normal size case fan and adding my own creative flair to the design. This model has an unfathomable amount of design consideration so that it could be produced using the tools at my disposal. It's 500 by 500 millimeters in size, which means each corner fills the whole print bed on larger i3 3D printers, and I just couldn't make it from solid black plastic either. It has to be RGB, because RGB fans spin faster. So I designed it out of several interlocking sections with the goal of inserting a few meters of addressable LEDs. Speaking of 3D printers, do you want an Ender 3 for 99 bucks? Well, thanks to Micro Center, you can. You might already know that you can buy all kinds of computer parts from Micro Center, like, um, more normal sized case fans. But did you know they also have all of your maker needs covered too, from 3D printers, to filament, to resin, and much more. You can even order online and pick up in store for those last minute builds. Now, I'm based in Australia, but when I last visited the US, I needed some fast SD cards quickly, so I ducked into the local micro center, and I was quite frankly blown away by their selection, prices, and knowledgeable staff. I am more than a little bit jealous. And for March, new Micro Center customers can pick up an Ender 3 3D printer for only $99, which is an incredibly affordable way to get into this amazing hobby. Check out the links in the description below to learn more, and a big thanks to Micro Center for helping make this ridiculous project possible. Now, back to the build. I designed the back plate to be cut out of MDF, and while you could do it by hand, it just so happens that one of my mates has this awesome full sheet CNC router. This thing is an absolute beast. It ate through the wood like nothing. And for the middle cutouts, I was like, you know, why don't we just use tabs and clean it up afterwards? But no, apparently the spindle is so powerful that it's easier just to obliterate the entire pocket into sawdust. The finish is incredibly clean for what I usually perceive as a fluffy, crappy material. And that's all thanks to this strange cutting bit, which cuts up and down simultaneously somehow. I don't know how it works, but I'm definitely not arguing with the results. The corner pieces took over 24 hours each to print, but being PLA, it wasn't too difficult. PETG, however, is another story. If you're new to 3D printing, then well, Hi, my name's Angus, I run Makers Muse here on YouTube, and it's my aim to empower your creativity through technology. And I have a ton of videos on 3D printing from tutorials, reviews, and projects. But long story short, you can print in all different kinds of plastics, but for transparent details, there's just no better option than PETG. However, this material absorbs moisture rapidly from the air, which boils out of the hot end as it prints, making the print all cloudy and stringy. It's just awful. And it just so happens that where I am in Australia has had the wettest summer in recent memory. I ran a dehumidifier which pulls liters of water out of the air each day, but I found out to keep the PETG in a dehydrator and feed it directly into the printer for best results. For some of the shrouds you can actually see where they start to get bubbly as the filament reabsorbed moisture after I had turned the dehydrator off overnight because just for safety reasons, but I'm still pretty stoked with the end results. They slot into place perfectly. But a pretty case a fan does not make. It needs, I don't know, a fan. And this is where I intend to flex on Corsair just a little bit. Their fan was actually made by Volpin Props, an incredibly talented prop builder. And it looks absolutely stunning, no question. 
but it's not the most powerful giant fan around. When Gamers Nexus tore it down in a uh, revolutionary test video, you can see that the motor inside is pretty wimpy. It's a small DC motor belt driven to the hub through a worm reduction gearbox. That's fair enough for a prop, but nah. I'm using this. This is the weapon motor from my featherweight combat robot Vanguard. In fact, I'm going to steal the entire weapon system to power this fan using a roughly 4 to 1 spur gear reduction to the hub. This is a BLDC or brushless DC motor and it packs 1500 watts of power into this tiny package. This motor is 600 kV which means it spins 600 times per volt and I'm going to work my way up to a 6 cell LiPo, which is about 22 volts, which means a lot of RPMs. I honestly have no idea if it's going to work or just explode. As of this stage, I haven't run this full speed, but we're going to find out. Speaking of exploding, turbines are designed to spin incredibly fast and um, not explode. So I took some inspiration for how turbine blades are designed and gave each of my fan blades this kind of dovetailed base, which keys into the center hub and a top hub locks it all in place. <sighs> well, time to reprint. Perfect. And this is the shaft, a 20 millimeter diameter case hardened steel rod. Overkill, yeah, but incredibly convenient. What isn't convenient, however, is just how poorly the bearings rotate. These ball bearings are designed for long service life, so they're packed with grease and have rubber seals to keep the dirt out, which is awesome for longevity, but adds a lot of rotational resistance. So I gave them the old fidget spinner treatment. Yeah, fidget spinners. Remember those? You can massively free up a ball bearing by removing all the seals and stripping all the grease away with solvent. I then spray them down with WD-40 and sure, this pretty much ruins them, but they spin oh so smooth. I figured that the motor pinion would be the most likely point of failure and buying one in any kind of a reasonable time frame just wasn't an option. So I printed it from Eigador L150, which is a special high wear material from Igus. It's a little challenging to print, sure, but it's super tough and perfect for motion components like this. I might be doing a much larger build in the future using Igus materials, so subscribe if you don't want to miss that. It took a bit of convincing to assemble the fan hub sandwich, but I think we're ready for a test. Okay, so this took way too long to get working. Forgot which channel throttle was. It was channel three, not channel one. That was rid of my problems. I'm using the box from the collab I did with I Did A Thing, which was the lawn mower we did, the remote control lawn mower. As you can hear, it's currently raining torrentially and it's actually flooding outside. I'm not even kidding. So without further ado, let's see if this works. I really hope it does. Okay. <laughs> the cutoff uh, for low speed is quite high. I'm just gonna step away and full send it. All right, Godspeed. Well, that's terrifying. Time to finish it. One of the most difficult parts to figure out in this build was securely attaching the body to the MDF backplate because 3D printed plastic sucks at holding threads. Instead, I got these huge threaded inserts designed for inserting into wood and heated them up with a hot air gun before screwing them into place. I've never done this before at such a scale, like these are M10 bolts and I was a little bit afraid of cracking the plastic or just melting right through, but it actually worked out incredibly well and the end result looks almost professional, which is rare for me. For that fully sick RGB effect, I used a good three meters of addressable LEDs and just hot glued them down, routing their power out the side to a dedicated adapter because with 176 LEDs, that's a lot of RGB to power. Finally, after days of CAD and weeks of printing and assembling, it is done.
This is the world's most powerful 500 millimeter RGB PC case fan. Am I being pedantic? Yes. But for real, if you consider that the power consumption of a standard 120 millimeter case fan is about 0.25 amps, this motor can pull over 200 times that without breaking a sweat. How powerful is it though? Well, I'm not actually too sure. I don't have a current meter that can go high enough, but if you guys want the raw numbers, let me know. I will source some current meters and do a follow-up video. But what can you do with a giant 1,500 watt PC case fan anyway? Please, what can't you do? Are you raking up leaf litter like a loser? Well, it's no problem for this fan. It's just like a leaf blower, but way more impractical. Awesome. Is YouTube making your small CPU sweat? Please, it's no problem for this fan. Hey Major Hardware, how's that for a fan showdown? I'm just kidding, you're awesome. Guys, if you haven't seen the fan showdown series yet, it's really interesting, I'll link it right here. Hot chips too hot to handle? No problem. <laughs> Okay, well, this is it. This is the six cell LiPo full charge max power test. I've learned from my mistakes and it is strapped to the table. It's not going anywhere unless the whole table goes somewhere, which I don't think it will. I don't know what to expect. I've got my safety glasses. I'm gonna be sitting here. Let's do this. And that was full speed, and <laughs> some plastic came out of the gearbox. <laughs> I uh, can smell melted PLA. <laughs> I think the spur gear is busted. That was terrifying. Thanks for watching. This was a super challenging build, but I'm stoked for the end result. If you want to build one of these monstrosities for yourself, you'll find the files and information in the description below. And a big thanks to Micro Center for sponsoring this video. And a reminder, if you want to pick up an Ender 3 Pro for $99, be sure to check out the description. Catch you later, guys. Bye.